Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another large block ship, which is another mining assisting ship, which is designed to go around with your mining ship over to asteroids and has a small intermediate dropping point so you don't have to keep going back to your base to unload stuff or to refine anything you collected up. So this is the MAV, which is what I'm currently standing on, and it's fitted with assemblers, refineries, jump drives, and a nice little platform for your mining ship to come and dock up to, and even connect up to that little, what I still think is an ejector, but it's actually a small block connector. So yes, we've got a fairly big interior on this, we've got everything we need to survive minor drone attacks, and it does come with a very unique design. So pressing F10 and find this in the spawn menu, the MAV is 1,759 large blocks, using no mods, but it does use pretty much all the DLC packs. We've got a nice offer information about it, such as what it's designed for, as well as its features and everything included, and then a little tidbit at the bottom saying it uses the automatic LCD screen script as one of its two programmable block uses. So giving this thing a thumbs up, we move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, quick tour of the interior, and I think that'll be that. So not sure if there's going to be any space pirates around here, but we're going to slam it into an asteroid at the end of the day. So at the very front, this is what we get, the MAV. So we've got two spotlights to light up the darkness, an antenna to make sure we can always find this thing, a camera to be able to drive this and get a good view of what's going on ahead of us, then a couple of ion thrusters, which are the only form of thrusters that appear on this ship. If we were to move around onto the side, we can see our lovely orange steel blocks, as well as a couple of hazard skin, and some magnet plates below our ship to clamp ourselves down on. Over to this section, we've got a red light, right next to a warfare battery, above that, a window block that goes to our hazard skin, and then up to our railings where our mining ship will be sitting. As we were to move along, we've got a little intersection in here where our ore detector is sitting, as well as a survival kit. So if we did die while manually mining stuff, it would just respawn on the outside. And while well, you do have a little bit of protection from any kind of incoming shots, but it's there if you want to use it. If we were to continue along, we've got a couple more ion thrusters for our left and right, a transparent LCD screen to display a little logo. There's a control panel in case you want to access it from the outside. There is one of our turrets. And as we were to move all the way up and towards the back of the ship, we can see our bridge for how we're going to drive this thing around, as well as some great detail with another transparent LCD screen, a couple more windows pit inside, some more hazards in, some more orange blocks, as well as some beam blocks that come over to this little panel, protecting the ion thrusters at the back from any kind of dodgy shots coming towards it. There anyway, that's how it's set up. Come around towards the very back of this thing, all the way around, and there is our ion thrusters to push us around. So yes, we've got the protective panel on both sides, and to push us around, we've got two large ion thrusters, three small ones. Then right above there, we do have a little catwalk walkway, which is where we're going to come out, and we'll have a good view of what's going on behind us. Then right below there, we've got two heat vents that might open up when we drive this thing around. Anyway, moving up and looking down, there is the back of our ion thrusters. There's our little catwalk. We do have a light right above there, so we get a bit of light in the darkness. Then pulling away from there, some more hazard skin. Above there, I think, I think they are the warfare batteries. Then across next to two more interior lights, we've got a few more windows peered down into our bridge. We see the gun on the opposite side. Then down to here, here is our beacon. Right next to some more ion thrusters. There's some steps to go down and into our ship. And this is our main way to go into the ship. And that's right next to our docking pad for a small mining ship or small fighter to come and dock up to. So yes, you can see my character standing right next to it. It wants to say put on this jetpack and lay him down onto the floor. And put him all the way down. There we go. So he just fits in one of those corners, so it kind of gives you a rough size how big this pad is. Yes, in the middle, that is our small block connector. I still think of them as the ejectors. It's going to take quite some time for me to get used to that. Yes, it's still a nice little setup for a small ship to come and dock up to. Anyway, that's the wrong button. I want this camera. We come drop down and come underneath this, pass our camera, pass the antenna, all the way down. There is our magnetic plates to clamp ourselves down on. There is our jump drive where we can jump 2,000 kilometers while empty. There's the bottom of our ore detector, some more ion thrusters to move us up in space. There is a proper connector to this thing up with a camera right next to it. Then moving all the way along, there's a red light, there's some more white lights. Then right below our armoured panels, or right next to our armoured panels even, there's two blinking red lights. And there we go. That's a brief look around the outside of the MAV and looks bloody fantastic and very unique for what's set up and going to do. So now what I can do is just grab hold of my character, we have a quick look around here. So let's go and land him down. We do have a gravity generator so we won't float away when we jump. But looking around, here is our docking pad, and that's how the connector is sticking out. So yes, where we can go is down these steps, and that leads us into the ship. So all the way down to here, 
now come into a little section where we can peer in to our little bedroom windows, which is accessible from the inside. Turning around, we've got a locker on both sides. We now walk around to here for a cargo access. And then down there, or at least on one of these sides, there's our ore detector, but we should have, I believe that could be it, or it might be on the opposite side, will be our survival kit, which I talked about earlier. Anyway, opening up this doorway, we now come inside a double door for an airlock. And I have set up the auto door and airlock script on one of the free programmable blocks, so I don't have to keep turning around and closing it behind me. Yes, this is what we're greeted with. Right in front of us is our new full block air vent. To our left is our LCD screen telling us our batteries, our cargo and our O2 HU generators. Looking to my right, we then got a doorway that will lead into our little living quarters, with this is one of the windows we saw just a second ago, with a bed, a seat, a locker, and that's about it. Opening up this, coming through here, we've got a little kitchen block to cook our food on. Turning around over to this section, our shower and toilet is set up. Then into here, another locker. Looking up, we then just about see our bridge above us. And continue through this section. Cargo access in the floor. Then opening up this up. Another doorway to separate this area. Then walking through here, got some windows pit outside. And if you are interested in the skybox, there will be a link to its description below. This is a nice fancy one that has a giant planet below you. Yes, walking through this section, another full block air vent. There's another survival kit, so we can spawn on the inside if you need to. A bunch of warfare batteries, a couple reactors, and some steps that lead all the way up. But there is our gravity generator, walking up to here. Here is our event controller block, which is for our warfare batteries, where as you can see when it reaches 20% threshold on power, what it's going to do is switch off our refineries to make sure we're not going to use up that last 20% when we could use it to fly around and get back to base. We just come out of this for the moment, turn around, start coming up these steps. There's our reactors on the side there. Walking all the way up to here, another cargo access. Now we're all the way at the top, where if we was to turn around, this would be our little catwalks that we saw at the very back of the ship. So again, another double door. Out to here, here's our catwalks. Looking down, there's our rear ion thrusters. Looking up and around. There we go. So opening this up once again, coming inside. And I get a proper look on this section. Well, we've got some lockers around the room, we've got two programmable blocks. This one is what's set up by default, which has the automatic LCD screen script, which is why all the LCD screens are telling us our cargo and power used. On the left hand side, this was a blank one, where I put the auto door and airlock script on there, just to make it a bit easier when walking around. We can see some steps go all the way down to where we just were. Lockers around the room, LCD screens once again telling us our cargo, our ice, oxygen and hydrogen. On the opposite side, we then got our batteries and reactors. Looking around the room, there's our windows to where we just were. There's our weapon locker, which I don't recognise. It seems... I don't know whether I just completely forgot about this block, but I don't recognise it in the slightest. Yes, we've got button panels on the left and right hand side. One side will control the lights, the other side, so this one will control the reactors, hydrogen engines, refineries and assemblers. Just walk around here just to show you. Here's our light controls, and we just turn it on and off with a click of a button. In the floor, another cargo access, and all we need to do... It's come towards the front. So walking through this section, this is what we get. On the left and right hand side, we do have two control seats, which are set up to control the turrets around the ship. So you can take control of this, find them straight forwards if we need to. But we just hop out of this, come into the helm, and actually go through the proper controls. So in first person view, this is what we get looking all the way around. We have a good view of what's going on ahead of us and above us, but not too much on the sides. Coming to third person view, number one's going to be front camera at the very front. This is on the very front of the ship. Number two is going to be for the camera below our ship next to our connector. Number three is going to be for our spotlights at the front to turn them on and off. There we go with that. Number four is for our ion thrusters all the way around the ship to turn them on and off. Number five is for our connector underneath to lock and unlock it. Number six is for magnetic plates at the front. Number seven is for our jump tries where we can jump 2,000 kilometers. We we'll just go do that right now. Number eight is for our beacon on and off. Number nine is for our batteries to auto or recharge. Then on the tab number two we've got manual control over our two turrets, our ore detector on and off. Our antenna on and off. Number 5, 6, 7, 8 is for our reactors, hydrogen engines, refineries, and assemblers to turn them on and off. Number 9 is for our hydrogen tanks to stock power on and off. Then on tab number 3, we've got some controls for our lights around the ship. Number 5 is for our camera, which is sitting right next to our bridge. And then number 7 is for our projector, so we can project the entire ship if we want to repair it up if it ever took damage. And what I spot on the bottom right hand side of the screen is a space pirate. Let's see what it is. Space pirate vulture. Ooh, that could be a fun one. And there it is, we're now approaching it for 1.5 kilometers away, coming out of that camera into proper third person view, didn't mean to do that. Now just gonna hide the HUD, we're just gonna drive all the way up to it. So this is gonna be a very big pirate ship, they're gonna have a lot of guns on there, and I'm expecting to just instantly die. Here comes their rocket launches, that's gonna be very bad for me. And well, it looks like they just disabled most of my guns already. 
I'm just gonna maneuver around. In fact, I might just start to ram into them, because that's gonna be my best bet. There goes one of their hydrogen tanks. And surprisingly, that completely disabled them. I was thinking about just ramming them around and letting the guns do their work, although I think my guns are currently destroyed. That one little poke with the ship has fully disabled them. What damage did I deal? Not too much. But that ramming spike at the front, the antenna, did very good. But yes, that's enough of me having fun with this. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I suppose to just go and slam into this at high speeds. And that'll be that. And there we go, that was a nice big explosion to end this on. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.